Hello, everyone, and welcome again to Jason's in the House. I'm your host, Jason Paracella, a real estate agent with Keller Williams Realty right here in Beverly. And today we have a very interactive show. Uh, we have Jesse Wright. She's a sales professional with Cutco, and she works out of the greater Boston area. Pleasure to have on, you on the show, Jesse. Why Thank don't you, you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with uh, Cutco? Absolutely. So uh, I've been selling Cutco now full time for nine years. Uh, I just moved to Boston last August, so I've only been here a year and a few months, and I absolutely love the area. But um, I moved here for a few reasons. I wanted to try something new, and uh, this was the town to do it in. Um, I got started with Cutco from a letter in the mail, actually. I got a letter in the mail as a 19 year old college student uh, and it just said for you know summer work opportunity so I thought what the heck I'll give it a shot and so I applied to the letter they accepted me and I haven't turned back since it's been nine years now now is that a random letter or are they specifically how do they send the letters out. Absolutely. I believe what they do is they search through, they do a zip code search. And so long story short, they the idea with Cutco and the management is they recruit uh, young college students who are just, you know, again, looking for part-time work. The reason it works so well for a college student or a young adult is that it's super flexible. So you can go right around your work schedule at uh, in your student schedule for, for classes. So I saw a lot of value in that as, uh, as a student. And again, they were paying very well. So um, I really enjoyed that. And you got paid for just doing the appointment, even if your client didn't, did oh, or I did see. not purchase Cutco. And then, um, you know, of course, you make a, a more money on the commission end, too. So it is a commission based position. Okay, good. So, what we want to talk about today is uh, show the viewers some differences between, I mean, a lot of people probably don't think about this stuff, but it's probably right. something really. Everybody, you know, kitchens are so well used and kitchen utensils. So we want to tell people about what to look for in knives, differences, things that may not they may not uh, really see unless they were explained to. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you're from Cutco. We're certainly not going to endorse Cutco, but we want to use you know your knives to show the differences and things like that. Yeah, I know you also have pots and pans. We're going to show. Mm -hmm. But let's start with the knives and kind of go through some things we should be looking for when we go to purchase knives. Sure, absolutely. So the first thing to consider, in my opinion, when you're looking at knives and pots and pans for that matter, is price point. Um, you know, like you just said, there are a lot of uh, quality and prices. Now, for available. an example, let me interrupt you. Normally, you go as a guy. I go to Stop and Shop or something and just pull a knife out and right. use it. So right. let's talk about that because I would imagine too that people probably don't want to spend a lot of money on knives. Right. So let's talk a little bit through that too as you You talking. got it. So and again, what kind of goes with price point is guarantee. The Stop and Shop knives or the Walmart brand knives, there's nothing wrong with them, the knives themselves. However, quality is the main issue. So if you do, it's like anything else, the more you spend on a, a certain specific item, you can relate this to clothes and cars and just about everything. If you're gonna spend more money on it, it's probably a higher quality, uh, meaning it's not gonna wear out, dull, or break uh, as fast, let's put it that way. Um, and again, the guarantee. A higher quality product, you're probably paying for the guarantee a lot of the times too. They'll actually you know, service your car for you if you take it back to the dealer that you bought it from uh, versus just getting you know, a used car from a, a car car lot. Right. Um, so it's very similar as far as that's concerned. To give you my, you know, my personal opinion as far as price points on knives, there's the, uh, you know, everybody spends something different. But when I, when a client asks me what's a good price point for a knife, I say anywhere between 50 to $100, maybe a little bit more depending on the steel. If there's more steel on the knife, it should be more expensive. So the there's more, obviously a bigger knife for more, like you said, more steel on the knife is yeah. going to be a more expensive knife. You got it. So a pairing knife might be, will be less than a cleaver or you something got, like that. You got it. Complete, that's, that's exactly what the idea is. Um, but again, Stop and Shop or, you know, Walmart brand knives, I, I have, you know, as as a college student, you know, we used to have all those different types of knives in the house because they were super cheap and you just needed something to cut. Right. But um, as I've been, you know, selling this product and working with so many people, I've also realized that um, adults, people who've been cooking for a while, they also want the value of a very high quality piece because uh, they don't want to keep spending the money over and over and yeah. over again when your knives wear out or break uh, you know they want to have something that's going to last so it almost becomes an investment some of the stuff absolutely I, I absolutely call it an investment yeah 
Okay. Yeah, it's just like anything else. If you're ready to invest, and some people aren't. I, a lot of times I'll ask clients, are you in the market for a high quality set of knives? Uh, because I want them to realize that what I'm about to present to them isn't cheap or junky. Right. And you gotta be willing to spend the extra money uh, because you buy it once. You don't have to keep replacing it over and over again. So I'd say the price point's the main thing to consider when you're you're doing, uh, you're looking at knives. And also do some research. You know, uh, you can Google a lot of things. Of course, uh, things on the internet. Um, if you're looking on TV, by the way, and you see a knife set sold on TV, that might not always, again, be the best. Um, but what I'd recommend is do a little bit of research. Because uh, Germany, they make great steel. Uh, Japan has great steel on the knives. And again, the second thing, again, uh, that I'd recommend is the guarantee. If you're buying something that is expensive, look at what kind of guarantee they have. Because say that knife, you get it out and you accidentally break it. Or it, you drop it and it just the tip breaks. Is that knife guaranteed? Or did you just spend $100 and that's all you got? Mm. Is that knife that's now broken? So, so how does it, why would Japan or Germany have better steel than you know what I mean I don't know how the United States ranks steel wise with those two very very that? close yeah absolutely um, I mean what's supposed to be the so if you're looking at a knife what if it was made in Germany Japan or United States which one would you Choose. I'd say American made first and foremost just because we're putting Americans to work. Simply that. I'm That's putting true. people yeah. in our country to work and get have letting them have a job and get paid and you know, eat. <laughs> right, right. So that's the basic thing first. Um, I know, though, through my business that Germany has the highest quality steel available as well as Japan. Um, so how do they how do they have better quality steel? You know, I think it, it, it's just the way they layer it. It's the way they can make the layers so this, of steel. So that is technology. They have the technology? Right. Okay. Right. But also, and I want to go back on that to, um, let's say China or Taiwan made pieces. Um, it's kind of an obsolete thing. They know that they can make it to technically break. They make things to be obsolescent so that it just literally, they make it. They know that over time it will break. And what happens is that person, that consumer goes, oh, I need another set of knives or oh, I need another pan. They go out and buy that same pan again because it was cheap to begin with. Go ahead and replace well, it. Well, it was made to be, to break over a certain amount of years. You got it, yeah. So I would imagine hopefully that, so that type of product would be more likely to be less money. Right. So then you go to the real high quality one that's really meant to last a lifetime, and especially yeah. if it's guaranteed, right. then they have to replace it anyways. Right, and yeah. a lot of times you'll see uh, f a lifetime or forever guarantee on products, which is the way to go, because again, you spend the money once, and you're not gonna spend it over and over again. A lot of companies, too, will have investment options for you, so that way you could budget it, you know, because nobody wants to shell out a grand if they don't have to, when you can spend a 200 bucks in five payments or something like that. Right. So a lot of companies will offer that, too, but just do a little bit of research on that. That's the first, you know, the guarantee, the price points are absolutely the main thing to consider when when looking at knives so a high quality knife if you're saying say it's a hundred dollars mm -hmm. so if you're if you're gonna get a knife for 200 you're probably overpaying not or necessarily because everybody values something different too so you have to take in that consideration I'll meet sometimes people that say you know what I'll spend 200 bucks on a knife and I'm like okay cool well then you're gonna be really satisfied then because our stuff might be a little cheaper, you know? Um, or the, the specific pieces. Yeah. But also I've met people that, you know, $50 is definitely the limit, they don't wanna spend more because I've noticed that if people do not like to cook, they probably do not value high quality knives right. in the kitchen. They don't, they, they're like, hey, it cuts, it doesn't matter. Right, right. If they enjoy cooking, then they will be like, okay, yeah, I'll spend that type of money on a knife. That's not an issue for them because they enjoy the process, they enjoy cooking. Yeah. All right, so let's get into some specific um, yeah I want to show you things too. you can show us as to what people should look for yeah absolutely so when you're looking at knives and uh, as far as what to to look for in the details of the piece first of all I'm going to show you by the way like the difference between wooden we'll start there wooden plastic and what we call thermo resin a high impact thermo resin so for example uh, wooden handles there's the the main problem with a wood handle is that it's not meant to be put into the dishwasher so what will happen is it over time will just get really 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 yucky so all right so a wooden knife the, the, so it's really not going to be dishwasher right. compatible after over time, like you said. Right, a it wooden knife is, about, is not dishwasher. sanitary wise? Right, a wooden knife is extremely unsanitary. Okay. So basically infests from like the inside out. So it's not the it's not the highest quality stuff, and it just will really not last for a lifetime. Is, so that, is that so? Is wood considered the lower price point? Mm -hmm. So wood's the lower, okay. Yeah. So wood is the first thing, and here's another um, wooden knife. This is actually a great way to show it to you if you guys can see this. So the wood on, on the inside 
I know you can't maybe see this, but it's basically rotting. I know you can see this, Jason. It's all dark, real, in the, in the middle next to the tang. The reason is that is because, again, it's just all the moisture is staying hidden in there. And if we broke this apart, who knows what we'd see in there. Mm. It's very unsanitary. So wood is not the, the, the best way to go if you're looking for longevity. Okay. Um, the other thing I'd say is plastic. Plastic handles, these aren't meant to be in the dishwasher as well. And what will happen... Sure we can, yeah, I think we can see that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So with plastic, the, the issue is that um, it's not meant to be put, put in the dishwasher too. It warps. It will um, easily discolor. I believe I had a discolor. So the, so the plastic too. ones, because of the heat of the, uh, the dishwasher. Yeah. Right. The okay. plastic isn't good for the dishwasher at all. Okay. Yeah. And so these aren't, these again are obsolescent. They're not just made to kind of break over time mm -hmm. or warp or melt. A lot of times they uh, end up was, melting. Actually, if it's near a stove or something too, you have to. Oh, control. absolutely. Yeah. I see a lot of warped handles when you, even if you set it near, like you said, yeah. it doesn't have to go on it. It even close to it, it'll so warp just, it. So just to give the viewers an idea, on a wooden knife, What's kind of the barrier on a price between a wooden knife and a plastic knife? You know, you can find these, you know, starting at $20 or so. Well, this, this will be more money, though, than a wooden one? I think they're about the same about price the same, point. Yeah. I don't think it, you know, there's not a major difference. Again, it boils down to the steel a lot of times, too. Okay. The steel is what, what really matters. Uh, for example, and also, uh, I'll explain the difference between the steel. See how, see how I can bend this? <laughs> this is 100% stainless steel. So the difference here too is stainless. It was very, very flexible. So what do you what do you think happens to the blade? It just it, dulls very, very quickly. It's not meant to have longevity at all. So a stainless steel blade will dull mo uh, quick the, the quickest. Oh yes, very, very fast. A lot of chefs they they're like get rid of stainless because they know it. They can't keep an edge on the knife. I see. Okay. So for example, a serrated edge. I can run my finger on this, this isn't sharp at all, and here's why, because these tips that used to be once very sharp, after just repeatedly touching the cutting surface, they wear down, round off, and break. And okay. that's the steel that's also just doing that. You know, I could easily just snap this if I, if I really put some effort into it. On the other hand, 100% um, uh, carbon steel, this is more carbon. Um, carbon steel, you can't bend it, Okay, and it's not meant to bend or break. But what it is is, if you guys ever seen like um, your grandparents' knives or something where they're it's all rusted and pitted and corroded, yeah. that is 100% carbon steel. That's a good knife. It will stay sharp for a very long time, but it rusts, pits, and corrodes very quickly, so it doesn't look pretty. But okay. it will stay sharp and it will hold an edge. So the idea is, if you can find a knife that has the combination of um, high carbon or the, you know the carbon and the stainless in in one, that is a good way to go because you've got the sharpness that will keep it sharp for a very long time. The stainless will keep it looking pretty. So you have so, the best so of you want to go with carbon and stainless. If together. you can find the, a mixture of those two steels See, in one knife, that's that's the way to go. So how would anybody, no one would ever know this stuff right. if you go to any department store or something. It, exactly. Even, if you go to a department store. I guess store, you look at how they look. Right. If they look good and right. sounds good. Then right. And the it. price is right, then go for it. But you know what? In, in, in my business, I've actually seen that where people, they go to a department store and they'll actually, you know, that you can't really pull up the knife and cut and use right. it and you try can't. it. That's the whole issue. So you go, I, I think this is the way to go. Let's do well, it. Well, you could have, you could, you could say stainless steel as like a high, um, a highlight. Right. The headline, stainless steel, everyone thinks, you know, stainless steel. Right. Well, everyone thinks that's good. Right. And it's again, not, it's not good for a knife. Right. A lot of people are just tricked. Consumers are tricked into thinking, um, again, going back to the Taiwan and, you know, the Chinese made brands is that, oh, okay, it's it, this will work. Right. You know, or the stuff sold on TV. If they ever say, Oh, look at the knife, it's bending. Oh, and they're excited on TV. That's not a good thing, you know? So, so it's not it's, a good thing. You want to stick to something. Because you wouldn't have any reference point at all. Right. Yeah. And a lot of times what it boils down to is just trying out the knife and seeing if it actually does work, if it's holding an edge for a long time. That's a good thing. Um, most people don't want to sharpen up their knives every single time they go to use them. I know I sure don't. Um, yeah, so nobody wants to sharpen the knives. No. Right? And even go and have them sharpened, that's a, a, a big pain. Most people don't now, want to do it, that. So there's a carbon of the stainless steel which one sharpens better they don't do they sharpen okay uh carbon will sharpen very easily stainless no way it doesn't really so no the stainless way. is probably the one you definitely want to keep away yeah, from. yeah and see but the stainless is very popular now so carbon steel was popular years and years ago when our grandparents you know were were very young and here's why because all they had to do is they knew if they bought those carbon knives they could just 
sharpen them on up. There you go. You can go to cooking. Again, they just don't look pretty. They don't look pretty. So you, I mean, we are them, eating yeah. a little bit of rust or whatever, you right. know. But the uh, the idea with the stainless is that it will not stay sharp, and you have to keep replacing it over and over and over again. Okay. Um, the, the so that's the idea with the the blade itself and the steel itself. Another quick thing to take a look at is this: uh, if the blade goes all the way through the handle. We call it a partial tang versus a full tang construction. So to give you guys an idea of a full tang construction knife is something like this, where the blade goes all the way through the handle. Here, I'll hold so it up. So you can see, yeah. The blade goes all the way through the handle. That's what you want. Okay, you don't so that's want a full tang. Full tang. Full tang construction is what it's called. That's what you want to initially that's how you can also know when it's a higher quality knife, is if it has a full tang construction all the way through. So you want to look for uh, stainless steel and carbon. Yes, the combination. And a full tang, which is this blade goes right through the handle. Yeah, okay. the blade goes all the way through. Partial tang construction, the reason they don't recommend it, I know you can't hear this, but maybe you can, Jason. It's oh, I can, you can hear it. It's uh, wiggling. <laughs> wiggle. Because what happens is, as you cut with it and you're putting pressure onto the cutting board, these rivets will loosen because it's really not held in there but just by right here. Then these small rivets that are brass nonetheless, which is not the best uh, rivet to use as well. But because uh, brass, well, what happens in the dishwasher is it expands and contracts and expands and contracts in the hot and the cold. So it just oh, gets see. bigger, smaller, will... bigger, smaller, and it loosens. So what are the so this knife here? What what the, what are the rivets made out of? Sure, these rivets are made out of um, high carbon surgical stainless steel. So okay. it's the similar steel that's uh, are in the knife. Okay. So it's not going to loosen or contract in their dishwasher. They stay flush with the handle too. I mean, no, I don't think that's ever on any type of label. No. What type of rivets? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no. So if you go to a department store, I'm not going to tell you that. No, yeah. that's the that's the only downfall with buying in a department store. If you ever have the opportunity to actually like test drive the knives, like you're test driving a car, uh, that's the best way to do it. I know at like home and garden shows, people, you know, Cutco sold that way, right. um, and other places like that. You know, if you can f actually test drive them, test drive them because it's just just like a car and you want to get the like the feel for it yeah okay uh, you know so that's along those lines all right so we went over the handles the steel so you want to go over a knife that's in your opinion well constructed the right steel the right handle and everything yeah absolutely there's and I'm gonna show you guys actually some pieces that I always recommend there are some definite you must haves in the kitchen and there's a few that are just like you know like cheese knives like if you eat a lot of cheese and you like to entertain, it's a great piece to have. But there's a there's a few pieces that I highly recommend that everybody has in their kitchen. Okay. I want to actually show you uh, the way that some of these pieces cut. We're going to cut some rope, okay? All right. I'm going to move this over. So the ones you showed, by the way, this one seems to be, this one's a full tang too, isn't it? No. No, see, it's only halfway. Isn't that interesting? Oh, I see. Okay. It stops. It doesn't even go the full way. All right. So the, I know we got a bunch of different knives out here, so just be careful. Okay, I'm going to slide this over. Okay, so let me show you a couple things. There's a straight edge we're gonna cut with this guy. We're also gonna cut with this serrated edge knife too. And we're also gonna use this knife too, which is also serrated. So what I'm gonna have you do, Jason, I'm gonna actually hold this rope just right down here. Okay. And I'm, I trust you, okay? So I know you're not gonna cut me. But I want, what I want you to do is use the full blade from the back to the front, okay? Push hard and use long full strokes, okay? Okay. And I'll let you know when to stop. Push hard. <laughs> so I'm using two hands. Okay, you can stop. Now the reason I want to show you that is because that's how a normal straight edge cuts. Okay, it does. It's not gonna rip and shred. It was like nice. A saw. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of going nice and through, nice and easy through it. Okay, um, but this one is just kind of kind of dull. We can actually try this knife too, just to give you. Uh, this is another straight edge. I just want to see the difference in cut and how it feels to you. Oh, this one's much less effort. Yeah, go ahead and go I mean, through it. I it's just going right through easy, yeah. Well, the reason I want to show you how it's cutting is it's cutting like a straight edge should, okay? And that's simple. It's not ripping and shredding, like ripping and shredding your meat. Yeah. A lot of times people um, want to have a straight edge to cut through their meats because they don't want to rip and shred it. So that's an oh, important thing too, because when you're doing, when you are cutting meat, you don't want to, like a turkey, if you're- Wasn't well, a steak knife usually serrated though? Yes, and I'll get there in just a okay. second too, yeah. So um, same thing with this guy, which is a serrated edge. See that, oh, that feel that push like, and pull? Yeah, that one's definitely- It's really, really- I mean, it's, it's going right that. through, but it's- 
rough. Yeah, you yeah. can hear the like ripping and shredding. And by the way, it's exactly what that would do to meat. You know, rips and shreds your meat. So yep. uh, that's what you want to be aware of too. Is um, some s types of serrated edges. Same thing with this guy. One more knife. That was much easier. Much easier, and it cuts like a straight edge knife. So even though it looks serrated, it's actually a special edge, and it's not serrated. So which which is kind of cool to the specific Cutco brand. Um, so those are that's the rope so cutting test. So is this test. what type of knife is this? It's called a petite carver. This is a petite carver. Yes. Yeah, so that's more for um, small roast and chicken every single day. Um, a little uh, pumpkins, you know, kind of around see. this time, yeah. a year in October. But also um, small melons and things like that. Uh, the reason the edge just cuts so well is because it actually looks serrated, but it's not. It's a special uh, double durable edge, and this is um, something that can be resharpened too. Okay. Uh, but again, that's that's something that has to do with uh, the guarantee with the Cutco product. Okay. And um, go ahead. I'm sorry. So, what else do you want to show us with the knives? I don't want. I know you kind of have. You have anything else you want to show us? Yeah, I want to show you actually just along those lines about how that cuts. Yeah. I want to show you uh, the the steak knife because, like you said, uh, this is actually kind of interesting. It's a butter knife and a steak knife all in one. So it has a rounded tip like a butter knife, but a sharp serrated edge knife, you know, so to cut through chicken, steak, poultry, fresh vegetables, um, you know, even if someone's a vegetarian, they can easily use this every single day on their, you know, on their plate, yep. French toast and vegetables and whatever else. So I'm going to have you use this. Um, this is not a Cutco and this is not, this is actually that that one that was kind of shaky. Right. But again, I trust now, you. Do, this all is these, like, do all these go right through? Is this a full tang? You can't see it. Yeah, it? it's actually a heat-induced tang. Okay. They get this piece in here red, red hot, and then they shove it in there. The only way this can actually come out is if there's 100 pounds of pulling pressure on the other end. I see. So chances of this sliding off are pretty rare. Okay. Okay. So let me have you do this. So this is this brand. This is a tough piece of leather. I always like to show this uh, this demonstration because it's it's pretty neat. So, so I'm just gonna go right through. Yep, and just watch them. <laughs> don't yeah, slice this me. Is not, <laughs> that's, Push a little harder. Well, I don't want to. to uh, okay, you can yeah, stop. that's not going too well. <laughs> And, See, that's, and, by the way, the, and by the way, this is the example of what will happen with a stainless steel knife. It won't cut after a while, after so many years. Are you more years. likely to get hurt with a dull knife or a sharp knife? Oh, man, a dull knife. Because you're trying so hard to push. You yeah. got it. The biggest thing is a dull knife is not a safe knife. A, a very sharp knife is actually a safer knife. Yeah. You might you're cut yourself, but you know, you're, not, you're not using nearly as much effort and pressure. You got it. Okay, pick up that guy. Now do the same thing. Pretty easy, wow. right? It's like totally different. It is. It's a big difference. And yeah. we, we show this a lot on demonstrations because it shows you how the knives cut so you can actually get a feel for it. Yep. Cool. That's definitely, I could definitely feel the difference. Yeah. Good. So um, do you want to move on to the pots and pans? Yeah, let's do it. To, um, well, wait a minute. No, wait. I had one more thing. I'm sorry. Because sure. I think that there's four major knives that you always need. Um, you and I were talking, you're vegetarian, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you do a lot of vegetable chopping, okay? So I always recommend a knife such as this. This is your, uh, what we call a Santuku knife. Doesn't matter, but the idea with this knife is right here. You wanna make sure that you have enough room to actually put your hands down and chop on the cutting board. And I'll show you, actually, I'm going to show you with some. So you're saying that everyone should have this knife. Yes. Okay. I ha well, because if even if you don't eat a lot of vegetables and you actually just do more meats, I still recommend this knife because when you're doing vegetables, when you're everybody cuts an onion now and then, or um, you know peppers or cucumbers or something like that, you need a knife like this. And the idea is that you just simply keep the tip down on the cutting board. You only use the last couple inches of the blade, and you simply rock and chop down like that in my hand, see my knuckles here? They're not actually touching and hitting the cutting board. They're simply, you know, going right through it. And then you just curl up your hands. So this is more of a, this is like a chopping knife. This is your chopping knife, yep. Okay. And so here's, and again, this is just one style. Uh, for example, this is another style, which is a chef knife, which actually uh, more people are used to a chef knife. The idea is exactly the same, rock and chop. But the, what you're looking for, again, is this knuckle clearance. That is the important part. Because you don't want your knuckles slamming down on the ground. So what's the difference between this one and that one? Nothing. 
simple just style. Just a different style? Just a different so style. Some, so a chef might like that one better than the... Actually, chefs prefer the other guy. What's it called again, the first one? Santuku. Santuku? Santuku, yeah. So everybody will call it a Santuku night. Yeah. Any, any company. Uh, yeah. It's the name of the night. It's the style. Yeah. It's the style. A lot of chefs prefer this because you can actually drag the tip, too. But you can also rock and chop. You could do a little bit of both. And it's also used for not just your vegetables, but I highly recommend it when you are chopping because that's when you're doing a lot of mincing and chopping is with a vegetable knife, this type of style, when you're usually doing vegetables. But I highly recommend a chopping knife. That's the first one I'd always recommend to people. If you don't have one, this is the one you got to get. Okay. By the way, I don't think we're going to have enough time to get into the pots and pans. We may have to have you on the okay. show again, but let's just keep going with the. We've got a few minutes left, so we'll okay, keep perfect. going with the knives. Um, the other uh, knife that I highly recommend is a knife this size and uh, having a serrated edge. And here's why. When you're doing a tomato, you don't want that straight edge actually on a tomato. You want to have the little teeth because that way it doesn't slip off. So I recommend a tomato knife. So Some something that's more, it's like a tomato is more um, uh, slippery or yeah. shiny, whatever. Yeah. Exactly. This is actually... Like, what about a cucumber? Would you use that? This is what you'd use for a cucumber, yeah. So tomatoes, trimming the fat from meats, cucumbers, peppers, your small, softer prep jobs. I highly recommend. So this isn't great for like going through chicken bone. Right. It's a special knife for that, you know? But this is something I'd recommend for sure. Is it trimmer knife? So there's a trimmer knife. Mm -hmm. Sanduku. Sanduku, you got it. Trimmer knife. And the other recommendation is a carving knife, sort of like the one we cut the rope with, the petite carver. If this this is a, uh, a great size for most people, so I'd recommend a knife this size. Or you can use a bread knife. You know, it reminds nice? me of the, uh, the, the, the those electric knives. Yeah. Are those? I mean, are those? Electric knives are fine. People it cut just, the turkey with the electric knife. You know what? Here's my opinion. When I'm sitting at the uh, at Turkey Day, I don't want. You yeah. know, and that's just me. I, I would rather a nice that's traditional knife. That's true. I mean, knife. it doesn't pre present as well, I guess. Right. So somebody... But a lot of people prefer it. It yeah. just depends on your preference. There's nothing wrong with it. You yeah. know, I just grew up using, you know, knives. I never had an electric knife, so right. I, I guess if I had one, I might use it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'd recommend a, either a petite carver or a, a bread knife. These are interchangeable, but it's for your bigger meats. You need something to go through bigger meats and melons and such. So, so. This, is, this is a bread knife? Yes. Okay. Yep, so this is your bread So you get your slash. carver, your bread knife, your um, chopper. S chopper, just call it a chopper. <laughs> that's the best way to do it. And your small carving knife, your yeah. small paring knife. Right. So that that's this would be a paring knife, right? No, well actually, yeah, let, what me, about, well, let me show you this. So the two other pieces that I'd also recommend that are also good, it just depends on your level of cooking. Um, this is actually, it's has the straight edge and it's a raw meat knife. So there is a big difference between the petite carver, which is for bigger cooked meats, and then a raw meat knife. When you're trimming the fat from meats, it sometimes gets just difficult. This is great for cutting meat into strips for fajitas and such. Your paring knife, this has obviously a very, very short blade, and the idea is not to put it on the cutting board because there's no room for your fingers at all. So if you're put slicing on the cutting board, you're just going to hit your knuckles down every time. That one, isn't that what, so you, you want to hold something, you're going to hold it, right? You got it. Like when you're peeling an apple, yeah. or um, I use this for slicing bananas real quick for cereal in the morning. I see. Or taking the roots and stems from fruits and vegetables, such as, you know, strawberries. I'll do the same thing with strawberries. I kind of quarter them in my finger, uh, or in my hands, and then put them right into the dish. Yep. So that's the idea with a paring knife. This is, again, uh, a tool that a lot of people would love and, you know, really need in their kitchen. I just use this a few times a week you know so I, I recommend the chopping knife and the pieces that I, uh, I recommended initially so that's how many knives did you what would that be for a starter set then uh, how many pieces yeah you'd have what one two yeah the petite carver the paring knife again this is a maybe you know for for people who you know kind of need it I recommend one of these well, two. If you have like even like roast beef and stuff you'd want the carver right right yeah so here's the pieces I'd recommend those four Yes, a chopping knife, bread knife for, for or mostly if you, even if you don't if you don't do a lot of bread, this can be universal for a carving knife. Mm -hmm. Same thing here. Um, you know, if you're a vegetarian, you're not going to need a raw meat knife, not right. or, you know, not usually, but I'd recommend this one, the petite carver, and here's why, even if you're not doing meats, you're carving bigger melon. So, this is a great knife for melon. Yeah, you get to even like a well, even like a watermelon or something. Yep, small watermelon, um, zucchini, squash, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, eggplant. I mean, this is the knife to use. So it's super universal. You can use it for just about everything. Um, but there are specific tools. And like I said, uh, you can go and get like a cheese knife or you can have other knives. Um, it just depends on your level okay. of cooking and what you need and what you like. Excellent. So we're out of time. Okay. 
So we will, um, maybe we'll have to have you back to do the pots and pans. Pots and pans, yeah, absolutely. But you went over a lot of stuff and we went fairly quickly. How can somebody get a hold of you if you have any further questions absolutely. or anything they want to talk to you about about now? Um, my website is um, cutcojessie.com, super simple. J E S S I E? J E S S I E, yep. Cutco, C U T C O, cutcojessie.com. Excellent. And you can find all my contact info there. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, uh, we want to thank you again for, for watching Jason's on the House. We greatly appreciate it. We want to thank BevCam for all their help. And uh, I just uh, got a YouTube channel going. So you may want to, if you want to look at any of the shows that I've done or any further information or contact me, you can go to youtube.com forward slash J.A. Paracella. See you next time. Thank you.